So you want to build a powerhouse of a Mac but don't have the funds to buy the brand new Mac Pros that just came out? Don't worry, it is completely doable and hey, you may even save a couple bucks. I have seen countless people build pretty fast Hackintoshes for under a thousand dollars, but this isn't one of those guides. This guide is for the enthusiast, someone who needs a powerful computer. This guide is for the video editor, motion designer, and 3D graphics artist, as well as the photographer. How to make it happen. You'll need a compatible motherboard. I chose a Gigabyte X58A UD5 Revision 2 motherboard because it has had great success in the Hackintosh community. You can basically go with any Gigabyte board as long as it runs Intel processors and is a correct chipset. I felt safest going with the X58 chipset, but there are others out there that will work like the P55. For a processor, you need to go Intel based. I chose the Hardy i7-970, which is a 6-core behemoth of a processor. Now you can always go with its smaller cousin, the quad-core, and save a lot of money that way. For graphics, I went with the trusty ATI-5870 series. This is in the new Mac Pro, so it is pretty well supported. Uh, another card is a 5770, which is in the entry-level Mac Pros. If you want performance, you need to have high-end RAM. I went all out and got myself some Mushkin Blackline RAM. Their 12GB pack is more than enough to get me rolling. Plus, if I want to upgrade, I always can. Go with DDR3 RAM at 1600MHz, you won't be sorry. For the rest of the hardware, it's pretty straightforward. For the hard drive, I recommend a Solid State Drive, or SSD. You can see my comparisons at the end of this video to see why. They are quick. I recommend one big enough to host your applications. 120 gigs was enough headroom for me. Then pick yourself up a secondary drive. I would pick up a few 1TB drives as your secondaries. Everything else remains the same as in building any computer. You need a power supply, optical drive, and your case. I also added a FireWire card to my setup to be able to plug in my uh, camera. How to bring it all together. This whole install process could not have been made easier thanks to Tony Mac x86 and his forum. First, you'll need to download MultiBeast and iBoot from his website. You'll also want to get the DSDT for your motherboard found on Tony Mac's website as well. Uh, like I said before, the links are at the bottom uh, of this whole guide. You'll also want to download the latest update for OSX found on Apple's website. You'll want a fresh copy of Snow Leopard. Now before you get started, you'll want to burn iBoot.iso to a disk. You can do this in Mac or in Windows. Now throw MultiBeast, your DSDT, and any other Hackintosh related files on your trusty thumb drive and put aside. Build your system. Take precaution when doing this. Always read the manual and if you don't know how to build a computer, find some walkthroughs online. This isn't a guide that will teach you how to build a computer, but rather how to pick the right components to build a perfect Hackintosh. Now this is important. When you're building your computer, you need to only connect one hard drive, only have a maximum of 4 gigabytes RAM installed, you can install the rest later, only have one video card installed, only have one monitor connected, don't have any other expansion cards installed yet because they may not be compatible. Do not connect any USB devices except for mouse and keyboard. You'll want to double, triple, and quadruple check all of your connections inside of your tower. Now comes the moment of truth. Turn it on. Step 1. Edit your BIOS. Set all SATA drives to AHCI, boot priority to CD-ROM first, and hard drive second. You'll want to change the sleep mode to S3 only and HPET to 64-bit and set to optimize defaults if your motherboard gives you this option. Save changes and exit BIOS. Step 2. Insert your iBoot CD and restart the computer. Now you will get a login type of screen that says iBoot on it. Eject iBoot and insert your Snow Leopard disk and hit F5. Step 3. Format your hard drive. For instructions on dual booting Windows and Mac OS X, please read step 3 in my guide below. For Mac OS X, format to Mac OS Extended Journaled and choose GUID Partition Table. Step 4. This is only for dual booting users uh, and is disclosed in my guide below. Step 5. Now install Snow Leopard. This usually takes about 15 minutes. Please be advised, there have been instances where it will give you an installation fail screen. Don't fret. Just restart as you normally would and it'll start up just fine. I did not have this issue though. 
Step six, put iBoot back into your CD-ROM drive and restart. Select your Mac OS X install from the bootloader screen and launch it. Once you have booted into Mac OS X, insert your thumb drive and copy the MultiBeast folder to your desktop and move your DSDT file as well to your desktop. Open MultiBeast, but do not touch it yet. Now update Snow Leopard with the update file you have on your thumb drive. Do not restart once the update is finished. I repeat, do not restart once the update is finished. After the update is finished, open MultiBeast from the background and install as it pertains to your computer. If you look in my guide below, I show you what I choose for my computer. Now restart your computer. Step 7. This is sometimes unnecessary, but if you have extra texts you need to install that will make your hardware work that MultiBeast doesn't cover, then install them now. I installed a network text and a USB 3.0 text. Now restart your computer. Step 8. Pray that your system restarts without hiccups. If it doesn't restart or hangs up on booting up, don't fret. Just insert your iBoot disk again and boot into Snow Leopard that way. Then run MultiBeast again and fix any issues you may have. Step 9. Use it. Now this computer cost me $2,134, which actually included my two Dell monitors. I got a few of the parts for a great deal because I searched around for deals. Do the same, you will save a lot of money. If that still costs too much, throw out the 6-core and put in a quad-core processor. Switch out the SSD for a 1TB 7200 RPM drive and you'll be set up with a Hackintosh computer fully capable of performing alongside a Mac Pro for under $1,000. You can check out the benchmarks below to see how my Hackintosh stacked up to a Mac Pro and my old MacBook Pro. Now do you want to see the benefit of running SSD versus a regular 7200 RPM hard drive? Now let me ask you something. Have you ever opened 40 applications at once? Now see a comparison between my MacBook Pro and my Hackintosh SSD when opening Photoshop.